What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create this cool looking uh, architecture model, it's a laser cut model and it it's just a way to represent some sort of a warped shape, either your topography or maybe the shape of your uh, building and it's a cool way to do it like from these ribbed, ribbed elements and you just kinda put them together later on and it, it usually you would do, do this using a laser cutter but the problem is how do you get the plans for the laser cutter? Well that's actually where Revit comes in and I'm going to be showing you how to use a combination of Revit and AutoCAD to kind of created this uh, this cool uh, uh, model or prepared this cool model model for a laser cutting but before I get started I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day and if you want to download all of my Revit project files please check out my patreon first link in the description okay so let's get started as you can see here I am in Revit and I'm just going to be using this architectural template for this project and first uh, we're just going to be going to to create that uh, that warped surface and for that I'm just going to be using a massing in sight just to check show mass and go in place mass uh, we can call it mass one it doesn't really matter for this uh, simple tutorial so let's just hit OK okay so now first let's set a few reference planes so I'm just going to go with three so just go reference plane or use the shortcut RP and just place three of them like this or as many as you would like. Now I'm just going to be naming them so let's name this one number one, this one number two and this one, yeah you guessed it, number three. And I'm just doing this so you, I can distinguish between the first one, the second one and the third one. Now to create the, uh, the actual shape I need to go to my south elevation, that's this one over here, so just go south elevation and here we've got these levels but they're not really important right now uh, what's important is to create our surface so uh, for that I like to use this uh, spline through points so just select that and now here's where the magic happens for the work planes uh, you actually go to the name and then you choose reference plane number one hit OK so now we're just attached to reference plane number one and you create one of these warped lines then you go uh, to spline through points again now here uh, you can choose reference plane number two so now you're on the second reference plane so you create some form that's a bit different then again you go spline through points and again you go reference plane but this time number three and always make sure that you're here draw on a work plane instead of draw on face uh, if you go to draw on face it might you might have have some problems or issues so I prefer just checking draw on work plane and now just make the final one kind of like that okay let's say I'm happy with this shape so let's go into 3d so this is what you have and now you just select the whole thing and you go create form and this is the warped form that you get and uh, maybe you can turn on a realistic to make it uh, a bit uh, a bit more visible the whole curvature of the thing so once we have this now it's time to try to kind of make it uh, for prepare it for a laser cutting so you just hit here finish mass and you've got your mass and now you go to massing in sight and you find roof from mass or roof by face so you just select that command and here I'm going to go with the thickest roof now this will uh, of course uh, depend on your uh, project and each project will have a different uh, roof thickness so I'm just going to go with this 75 uh, 7500 7 150 millimeter roof but of course you can create your own so you just go create roof and you wait for a second and there you go so you've got this warped surface and the important thing it's, uh, is that it's actually model geometry and that here you have some material to cut through. Okay, let's now prepare this for laser cutting. So how do you do that? Well, uh, what you need to do is you need to go to some of the views. Let's choose site plan for this one and uh, because it's above everything and let's go here with a section. You select the section and you just create a section. And there you go, you're done. Just kidding, there is a lot more to, to it. So as you can see, this section has this 
kind of a scope box and uh, here you can set it manually to whatever you want but you actually want to set it to the lowest uh, possible amount so what once the section is selected you go here to extends and here for the far clip offset uh, just make sure that you set it to something really low I'm going to type in number one and the units for this project are millimeters so that's going to be one millimeter that's like nothing so just make sure to have some a low number over there Next, you need to copy this, so I just go with CO for copy, make sure to check multiple, and then you just start copying. I'm going to go by the interval of 8 meters, so you copy it 8 meters, you go ahead 8 meters, 8 meters, 8 meters, and 8 meters. Okay, you could have used an array for this. I didn't for some reason, but anyway, so we've got a bunch of these sections, and make sure to count them and see how many you have or just select them like this and go into filter and it says six. So that's if you don't want to say count, count up to six for some reason. But anyway, okay, uh, now let's do in the other direction. So you just go uh, this section, you start off from here and you go like that. Maybe move it in a bit. And again, we need to fix this. So just scroll down once the section is selected and change the far clip offset to one. Then again, go CO for copy, and you just start copying it by the value of eight meters, or you can actually change, it doesn't have to be the same for the horizontal and the vertical ones, but for this one, I'm just going to keep it at eight meters. Then just select all of these and maybe notch them a bit using arrow keys, and you're done with this part. Now it's time to use these sections to export uh, our uh, section cuts to AutoCAD and then prepare it for laser cutting. So what you need to do is you need to scroll down over here and open up these sections. And as you can see, we've got 11 and we know that the first six are the these horizontal ones and from seven to 11, those are the uh, vertical ones. So uh, just scroll down a bit and uh, you find your sheets, you right click, you go new sheet and just select something as big as possible, in this case, a zero metric. I'm just going to open that up and now let's start exporting or preparing for exporting. So you just go over here and you go section one and you just place it like that. Now I suggest you use uh, 1 to 100, but of course you can use uh, whichever scale uh, that you want to use. Well, yeah, choose the one that you want to use, don't choose the one that I'm using. So I'll just go like that, and you uh, just move all of these. So you go one by one, you keep moving them. Let's go number five, and number six is the final one for the vertical ones. And the reason why I'm doing it like this or uh, why you need to remember that. You just need to know how to distinguish between the, the vertical ones and the horizontal ones. So here I'm just going to use two columns, one for the, vert vert or no, these are the horizontal ones and here will be the vertical ones. And I just like to select everything and here change this to no title. So I, it's just a bit less cluttered. And you probably might be tempted into turning off these uh, annotation elements and you actually don't need levels, but let's leave them in anyway, but the section points, uh, you actually really need them because this is where we're going to be adding those nodges that are going to help put all of this together when a uh, laser cutting. Okay, so let's do the rest of them. So let's do seven over here. Yeah, it's a bit wider, eight, nine and 10 and 11. Okay, let's do 10. And one more. Okay, so once this is done, I'm just going to select all of this and switch to no title. And there you go. Okay, so once we have this ready, like this for printing, you don't actually print it, you export it. So you just go here to file, you find export, and you search for CAD formats, and you choose DWG. You select DWG, uh, let's close this. Okay, so you just hit next and you find a place to save, I'm just going to go and save on desktop and you hit OK. Now you might be thinking that you're going to export only one CAD file, but uh, in actuality you're going to export just a bunch of them and uh, you need to find uh, the actual, the first one. Okay, the first one is the sheet and the rest of them like you have a sheet and then section. So just go with the sheet A101 uh, unnamed and you just open that up in AutoCAD. Wait for a second. 
how to get 2019. Come on, start up. Okay, just go open. And this is what you get. So if I zoom out a bit, as you can see, this is already prepared for printing in AutoCAD. And here, uh, one, once you're here, you can maybe double click here. And as you can see, this is now, oops, I just need to go back. Okay, so if I double click over here and select this thing, as you can see, this is uh, just one whole element. And if I try explode, Let's see, and then as you can see, it doesn't work. So what I like to do, and of course there probably is a better way. I just I'm just not aware of it. Uh, what I uh, what I usually do is I like I just go with lines over this. So and I just prepare that prepare it for printing like that or for laser cutting. So you just go maybe a line and you just go from here to here, and then you switch to spline. SLP. SPL, sorry. SPL spline. There you go. So you just go from there and then you kind of go through points. And you just go all the way around. And you just keep hitting at some sort of an length interval like this. And as long as you have spline through points, it's going to just follow the shape almost perfectly or perfectly, I don't know. And you let's go, let's finish it there. Then you switch to line for this one. Oh, where's that line gone? Okay, SPL. And as you can see, I am not an AutoCAD expert. I am a Revit expert. Let's go again. So just go like that, end it here, hit enter. Okay, yeah, enter was the problem. And uh, one more thing on the bottom, uh, you need to go here with line and then you find your your section uh, your section line. That's why we saved it. And you have to offset this. So you just go offset and then for the distance, you type in whatever distance or maybe we can set it up graphically. But usually you would uh, do this according to the thickness of your material. And you do something like that, and then you kind of create a line on top over here. Maybe extend this a bit, trim and extend, or just trim. Yeah, you do it like this. And then uh, for the rest of it, you have to go with spline, and then you go like this, to this point over here. Oops, yeah, it might make sense to bring this up a bit. Yeah, it's a bit tricky when you're going over these lines. And of course, remember that you don't really have to be perfect with this. So you just need to make it look like the original one. Okay, do we have some snaps for this? Yeah, like that. So you get the point. You just keep doing this and you keep making those little uh, notches. And once you're done with that, let's say we're done with this one, uh, you're going to select just that uh, just that line work that you did and you go control C and you create a new file and this is the actual file that you're sending for laser cutting and here you go control V you place it you check the scale so you just go line and see okay which units is this going to be if this says 331 is that like uh, 300 millimeters or whatever scale it is and of course the first thing you do you go over all of these and you make sure you insert these little notches on the bottom on this whole uh, this whole column. And for these, you would do the same notches, but you would do them uh, on the upper side. So if I find this section, yeah, it's there. So you would just make the notch like this on the upper side and give it an offset like this. And you make sure that it's deep enough so it will correspond to the notch over here. So you just do those notches and when you've got all of this uh, line work done, uh, you go and you just copy and paste it into another fi file. You select it and you just change the layer uh, to red, layer color, or you can go over here uh, oh, in layers and then change this to red. And the reason for that is usually uh, most laser cutting places are uh, everything that's red, it's then uh, 
it's then going to be cut and everything that's blue it's going to be uh, uh, kind of engraved and for the, that engraving what I like to do is like to go into text so just use text tool and just create small text over here and I just type in number one and hit enter okay so I've got this number one over here and I'm going to switch that to blue and th this is going to get engraved into this whole rib so I'm going to do that for the every single rib so it will, will go from one two three four five six and this one will go maybe a b c d e f g and how many of them you have so the point of that is to kind of uh, have uh, just uh, so you can follow because so you can follow which one is where because if you have like uh, 50 of these it's going to be really hard to keep track of which one is where so yeah that's how you keep track you just add those little numbers in blue so they get engraved at laser cutting and once you uh, are finished laser cutting you just have to put it all together glue it together and you're done Okay, so that's how you create this complex shape uh, model using laser cutting uh, with the help of Revit and AutoCAD. I hope this wasn't too confusing. Uh, it, it is a very complex process, but uh, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's really fun and you get some cool models out of it. And if there is a better way of doing this, maybe some plugin for Revit, please be sure to share it with me in the comment section below. Again, if you want to download any of my Revit projects, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, like and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.